him. I know. He can't just do that and think he's going to get away with it. If they let him get away with it, he's going to think it's perfectly fine to do next game. And we can't have that. We can't have that, right? Wait, who are you talking about? I'm talking about the lines. Oh, I was talking about Kutra, but you're right. Let's go! Give me what I want! Kick down the door! Drew, you are not doing this! What? Not nice! There's a giant head! <laughs> you hear yourself! I made like 2,000 of these. I'd like to have fun. With you, wherever you are, welcome to LFR. doing when you broke my nose he was training to be a linesman oh Leafs win 4-1 over the Tampa Bay Lightning there it is and now we head back to Tampa for game nine still no shoot wow a lot to talk about in that game but first think you know which way it's gonna go make your bet at sports interaction do they have a prop for if the linesman shoves you when the puck drops sports interaction has you covered pre-game live betting on all major sports and prop bets want to bet head to sportsinteraction.com sdpn that's sportsinteraction.com sdpn 19 plus please play responsibly it's very interesting considering how the last couple games went and how i wondered how this one would go the leafs with a relatively ho-hum effort against the new york rangers at least compared to how they've been over the last month month and a half and then the game against the washington capitals last game pretty easily arguably their worst game of at least the last month so how would they respond in this one would it be a let's just get to christmas sort of thing they only got two games left and one of them's at two in the afternoon against the flyers or is this what it ought to be a measuring stick forget the two losses the leafs are one of the hottest teams in the national hockey league the lightning are one of the hottest teams in the national hockey league and as mentioned on the broadcast the bruins are one of the hottest teams in the national hockey league they're all in the same division someone please end this nightmare all the rest of the teams in the division have between 34 and 30 points and one of them won the president's trophy last year if the playoffs were to start today the leafs would play the lightning but if we did the one through eight format the leafs would be playing the Lightning! The Leafs are currently third, the Lightning are in sixth, but remember the division winners are one, two, three? That would bump the Leafs down to the four spot and they would get the Penguins in the five spot. I like that! I think the number one thing I like about the Pittsburgh Penguins, besides the fact that the Leafs have played them marvelously this season, is they're not in their division! Enough! That's enough! So there were lots of things to talk about heading into this game that pertain to hockey in the sports and escapism but and there's no easy way to talk about this sometimes hockey and the real world collide in horrifying ways before the game it came out that i'm sure you all heard of the horrific shooting that happened in vaughn one of the victims was actually Victor Mete's grandfather. This is what the Leafs released before the game. Toronto Maple Leafs issued a statement following the shooting that took place in Vaughan, Ontario this past Sunday. Five lives were taken in the incident, including that of Maple Leafs defenseman Victor Mete's maternal grandfather, Vittorio Panza. Toronto Maple Leafs are shocked and saddened by the tragic shooting that took place in Vaughan this past Sunday. Our hearts go out to Victor and his family, to all the families and friends of those affected, and the local community. I want to offer my deepest condolences to Victor Mete and his family and to everyone just hug your family tight. There's no easy way to transition out of this but I do want to highlight something that happened before the game. Austin Matthews before the game he walked into Scotiabank Arena wearing this quote-unquote ugly but I thought it was pretty snazzy red and green sweater with a gold bow on it. That's a campaign for Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto that was started a few years ago I believe it was with Ryan Reynolds at the forefront of it and I want to highlight Ryan Reynolds for as often as, as we can before he becomes a Sens owner. Basically I want to talk about Ryan Reynolds for as long as we're allowed to like him. The Toronto Maple Leafs have supported Sick Kids Hospital for a long time and Austin Matthews relatively low-key visits that hospital to say hi to the patients and their families all the time and for this game he had special Christmas themed skates but they weren't just Christmas Christmas themed skates they were sick kids themed skates because he wants to get the word out there he wants to spread the holiday cheer so let's do just that there's a link in the description down below there's a function on the sick kids website that I didn't actually know about until tonight so instantly great job Austin you can actually go on the sick kids website and purchase gifts not just like a toy or something for a kid you can buy different packages that help out sick kids families you can absolutely get gifts that are on a wish list but you can get works of art stuff for the laundry room bubbles music therapy 
Kid Science Program, The Joy of Entertainment, Holiday Gift Bundle, Holiday Decorations, Handmade Hanukkah Stuff, Gingerbread Decorating, that's the one that Morgan Riley, he, he was just eating icing straight out of the dispenser when I went. All of those things cost different amounts of money and they're not that expensive. In fact, some of the gifts you can buy for as little as $10. Bubbles are $10, uh, the laundry room is $12, Parking passes are $15 each, and this is something I really believe in, so I purchased 20 of these. No parent should ever have to pay for parking to visit their kid in the hospital. So in honor of Matthews getting the word out, I thought I'd chip in $3,400 worth of gifts. And I'm encouraging you to chip in anything you can. Can you chip in a parking pass? That's 15 bucks, that's easy. Chip in someone blowing bubbles? It's 10 bucks. Arts and craft supplies, 18 bucks. If you're an American watching this right now, sitting there with your American dollars, this is practically free for you. Basket of baby toys, $30. And let me just throw it out there in case you're wondering, all of it comes with a tax receipt. Matthews wore the sweater, wore the skates, did his best to get the word out there, and to top it all off, he scored the eventual game-winning goal. That is superhero stuff. We gotta get it out there. We gotta keep it moving. I believe they call that goal support. Is that goal support? It's not. Whatever it is, call it holiday cheer. Link in the description for this video. And I, I think, can we do pinned comment as well, producer Drew? Let's do that. So that was a lot of words before talking about anything that happened in this game, but I think this game is actually pretty simple. Outside of Michael Bunting and the linesman, and don't worry, we will get to Michael Bunting and the linesman, the Leafs just kind of kicked Tampa up and down the ice for minimum 40 minutes. The Leafs outshot the Lightning 15 to 4 in the first period and followed it up. Oh, they took a step backward by outshooting them 14 to 4 in the second. The Leafs let the Lightning back into the game for like a few minutes in the third period, but at the end of the day, the shots were 11 11 in the third, and the Leafs come up with the big dub. Matt Murray had a pretty easy night. Andre Vasilevsky, not so much, and in the first period, he was holding the Lightning in it. One shot finally beat him in the first period, and what a shot. William Nylander gets it to Michael Bunting in the slot. He throws it to him. Number one, there's no way Andre Vasilevsky had any idea where that puck was going, and number two, even if he did, he wouldn't have thought that Michael Bunting could do that. I think the biggest Leaf fan didn't know Michael Bunting he could do that. The shot comes like off the toe of his stick and beats Vasilevsky short side top Chet. His 10 game point streak was snapped against the Washington Capitals but he gets right back on the horse in this one. What a goal. But then what happens at the end of the period? There was a brouhaha in the corner after the final whistle. A bit of a late hit but not that late and you're playing to the whistles and all that I get. But as they discovered on the broadcast, what Michael Bunting was so hot about is in the neutral zone, and I don't blame the refs for missing this because it was nowhere near the play. Bunting, skating through the middle of the ice, Mikhail Sergachev, skating with him, slashes him right on the hand. You know, I know the Lightning are a really good team and they've been to three straight Stanley Cup finals and all that, but I, I looked it up and you can't actually do that. So Michael Bunting was a little upset. So all the guys who are black and white, the officials, the, the refs and the linesmen, they all do their best to separate everybody. And Dan Kelly, who is a relatively young linesman in the NHL, is getting Bunting away from the situation. He's getting him away, he's getting him away! Dude, I can't show you the footage, but I'm sure you've all seen it by now. It's one of the most surreal things I've ever seen. Linesman Dan Kelly, who a lot of Toronto Marlies fans don't like because only a few years ago, he was a defenseman with the Albany Devils in the American Hockey League. He hit Andreas Janssen in the head and was suspended 10 games for it. Yeah, that guy's in his third season as a professional linesman, and I, I think he just went back to his playing days for a minute. Some of the people defending him were saying, oh yeah, oh, he's trying to keep Bunting out of the situation. No, no, if you go back and watch it, Bunting is already almost at the door. He's not trying to get past Dan Kelly. He's talking to him. He's talking to him like this close to his face. I don't know if his breath stunk. I don't know if he was saying something naughty, but Dan Kelly just shoves him off of the ice from ice to not on ice while Bunting's back is to the not ice, which if you've ever done that, you know is a great recipe for a yard sale. And just in case, like you see Bunting fall back and catch himself and you see this confused look on his face like, did you do that on purpose? He does it again! And the most beautiful part of all that, Bunting doesn't fall, he doesn't get hurt. The camera catches his reaction. And he said, paraphrasing, what the frick are you doing? That was crazy. And then I can't tell what he says afterward, but he just picks up a conversation with someone else. Michael Bunting is the best. And I can't adequately explain this, but lip reading Michael Bunting reads in my mind like Scarborough. How do you have an accent through lip reading? Anyway, what comes of it? 
Nothing. Bunting doesn't do anything. He definitely doesn't shove Dan Kelly back because that would be a 10-game suspension. And the NHL wouldn't even have anything to do with it. It's just that's what you get for abuse of an official. Now, I saw some people saying Dan Kelly should be suspended or he should be fired. I don't think we need to go that extreme. He made a mistake, an unacceptable mistake. But was it such cardinal sin that it should cost him his job altogether? I, I mean, if he punch punting, I'd say yeah. Scouting the refs, which is an unbelievable Twitter account, unbelievable website. It should be as valuable in everyone's hockey Rolodex as cap friendly. It's so good had this to say. After they talk about how Bunting won't get any punishment, and obviously he didn't do anything, as far as the official goes, Kelly may be called on the carpet for a post-game chat with Stephen Walkham, the NHL's director of officiating, though that will likely be kept under wraps. The NHL has issued fines and suspensions to officials in the past, typically without public acknowledgement. It's been nearly 30 years, though, since an NHL official has been fined publicly. Now, reporters, just doing their job after the game, asked Bunting what he thought about it, and he basically said, yeah, it's whatever, move on. That is a million percent the right choice. Now, what's he gonna say, really? It's, it's up to the guys above him to do their job and advocate for him, right? Well, um, it is technically, I have an idea. What if Sheldon Keefe and Kyle Dubas and Brendan Shanahan, all the way up that chain of command, Shut up! Like, don't, don't say anything! It's funny watching people out there talk about how, like, the refs favor the Leafs and the league favors the Leafs, a team that hasn't won a Stanley Cup since before the moon landing and hasn't won a playoff series since the first Bush administration, for crying out loud! But you would not believe the lengths the Leafs go to to try to stay in the officials' good books and massage the relationship, and it's okay, it's okay. They just started, uh, I think it was last year, or it was during the Canadian division, they started putting up pictures of the officials on the uh, game board every day so that the players knew who the officials were, basically to help them build a relationship with them. This is why I have the recurring bit on the podcast where I talk about sign sticks. Like, it's literally just about stroking the ego of the dudes wearing black and white. Half the time you'll see two identical plays. One is a slash from a rookie or sophomore, and the other is a slash from a veteran. And the reason one is called and the other isn't is because the dude knows the official. The vet's not, like, more clever and knows tricks of the trade. It's a slash! But these dudes get each other Christmas cards, man. I can't prove that, but I would believe it. Look, Bunting is fine. He's fine. You won. They already think you're whiners. Hmm? Soft team. Hmm? Don't give them any reason. Don't say anything. You go about your business, you take your two points, and you head right into Christmas. And that becomes easier for the Leafs to do if Stephen Wacom and the officials do their job. Now, what should they do? Well, that's a great question. I'm a big believer in precedence. I always yell and scream about it when it comes to the Department of Player Safety and hits and suspensions and all that. And the NHL never sticks to it. So I can't come up with something that should be done about Dan Kelly without knowing what the precedent is. Like what, what do guys get fined or what gets said to them or uh, how does the suspension work for an official? These guys have like a schedule and how, how much is it gonna screw everything up to like just have a linesman missing from a chunk of the schedule. I will say this though, we should know. Like, we should know. I, I know they try to keep it under wraps, but like, this was a very public thing that we all saw and it was talked about at first intermission, second intermission, post game, it was all over Twitter. We should probably know. Anyway, at the end of all of that, it was just offsetting minors for Bunting and Belmar, but at the beginning of the second period, the Leafs are still on the power play because Ian Cole tripped William Nylander like 18 seconds before that and everyone forgot. When the second period began, I was like, R really? Oh, cool. Give it to Austin. Austin's good. Give it to Austin. They give it to Austin. Yeah! Austin Matthews scores because, yeah, obviously the eventual game winner in his sick kid skates, unreal. Leafs are up 2-0 and out shooting the bejesus out of the Lightning. And it gets worse for the Lightning as the period goes. But in the third period, there's a little wrinkle. Rasmus Sandin leaves the game with a neck injury. Now, we don't know how severe it is. 
I would bet on him probably not playing on Friday because there's a break coming up and what's the point? Call one dude up for one game and ride into the holiday? But that doesn't help the Leafs in this game where they only have five defensemen left and at the end of the day, even if you're dominating them, you're only up by two and it's Tampa. Off the faceoff, Connor Timmons makes a miscalculation based on a funny bounce. It goes right to Vlad Nemestikov and he beats Matt Murray on the rebound. Oh no, they're within one! But even then, the Lightning controlled play for two, three minutes of that third period. Best thing you can say for them, I think, was that they played the Leafs equally in the third. I don't think Tampa dominated. I don't think there were huge score effects. The shots were 11-11. The Leafs hang on, great defense, great willingness to block shots and get in lanes. Engvall gets, get, gets an empty netter. Nylander gets an empty netter. Nylander's one short of 20. Can he get a 20th goal for Christmas. And the Leafs ride this out and Matt Murray wins with uh, like zero hyperbole, one of the easiest games of his life. He faced 19 shots. The final shot count was 40 to 19. Dominant, dominant, dominant. I don't know if the Lightning were just riding into the break, but the Leafs weren't. That's a huge, huge win. And just like that, it's like the last couple games never happened. Questions. Will the Leafs now try to acquire Ryan Reeves to address their lack of toughness with officials? Here's what I want to know. How weird was it being Wayne Simmons and watching that? Like all your protective instincts must kick in, right? But you're also confused. Hey! Hey! I love this one. What stats slash characteristics do you look at to determine whether one team is playing very well versus the other team playing poorly? Especially if you don't know the other team's players and vibes well. That's a fantastic question and I'll tell you why. There are nights where you can just tell a team is getting outclassed because they stink. It's an effort thing. It's a body language thing. A lot of it is about uh, speed and hustle and effort. And you can tell when a team is straight up not trying. Like the Leafs against the Ducks the other day. Like that was a team that the Leafs dominated but it wasn't just the Leafs dominating them. It was watching the Ducks not be very good, not be super into the game, and just be sort of lackadaisical and not very skilled. This was a game that, yeah, was off by the standard of the Tampa Bay Lightning, but a poor game from the Tampa Bay Lightning is still a pretty good game for most NHL teams. I thought this was a brilliant game from the Leafs, and this is really the Leafs, what they look like when they're at their best. They're skating really well. They, they play really efficient. Their passes are super efficient. Remember I kept saying that through the first like dozen or so games in which the Leafs were losing a lot to poor teams? They couldn't complete a pass. It was brutal. Now click, 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 click. They know where everyone is before they even look. And on the defensive end of things, teams can't get anything done because... The Leafs keep them two or three steps away from even getting a quality shot on goal. If you saw the stat on the broadcast during the game, while the Leafs were like doubling and tripling the Lightning in shots, offensive possession was actually pretty close. The Leafs only led them by something like a minute. A minute is still like a pretty decent advantage, but compared to getting doubled or tripled, they didn't have double or triple the time. I try to rely less on stats than I used to. I kind of go in and out. I feel like these videos used to be really stat heavy and i would just gotten away from it because this is a fan reaction. And what do fans thrive off of? That's right. Vibes! But you'd be amazed how often the vibes line up with the numbers. Question from scouting the refs. Oh, uh, they said, nah, we're good. Yeah, that's fair. Have you ever met an astronaut? I have met Chris Hadfield. It was just extremely not graceful. I was like, whoa, Chris Hadfield! And I like, I basically yelled at him as I was going somewhere else and he heard. And Chris, if you're watching this, I'd like to, I'd like to meet you in a not yelling at you way. Yes, they won, but remember, Steve, this isn't a measuring stick for the playoffs. In the playoffs, there was no three versus three, and the refs put their whistles away. Wait, what was that? This game didn't have three versus three, and the refs missed a bunch of calls. Still not a measuring stick, they won! I see what you did there. I see what you did there, and, and I think you should keep doing it, you petty king you. So, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends Link in the description, link in the pinned comment. Let's help out sick kids. Austin Matthews wore the sweater, wore the skate, scored the game winner. Why not?